All right, next on the agenda, that's going to be looking at collections of various kinds of atoms. Okay, anybody have any questions so far on this? I know a lot of this is review for many of you folks, maybe not for all of them. The uses of isotopes might be kind of new for some of you folks. But at any rate, okay. Now, there's a limited number of different kinds of atoms. There's only 92 what we call natural elements. Natural elements are ones that have stable isotopes, so they have been around for ever since they were created, possibly many billions of years ago. And that goes all the way from hydrogen, the lightest element, all the way up to uranium, the heaviest natural element. But there are some atoms that have no stable isotopes at all, so they would not have lasted billions of years when they were created in supernova explosions and things like that. They decay into other elements. And those are some of what we call the artificial elements. And they are produced in things like particle accelerators, atom smashes, that kind of stuff. So we go up, I think we're up to element 118 now. None of those guys have stable isotopes, and many of them decay into other things in a time scale of milliseconds to seconds. The artificial element that we're the most familiar with is, once again, Kim Jong-un's favorite, plutonium. Plutonium you cannot find in nature because plutonium isotopes decay away in periods of tens of thousands of years or less, depending on the isotope. And the one called plutonium-239 is the one that if you put enough together and squish it down enough, you get yourself a nuclear reaction and you blow a city up. <laughs> and then you wait and you glow for about 30 minutes until our missiles come down in Pongyang. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, so if he actually does something like that, he's got about 30 minutes to enjoy himself before Hong Kong gets incinerated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> and South Korea could probably make a nuke fairly quickly if they wanted to. They don't seem to have them. They, I'm sure they've done research scale stuff and they could put one together pretty <coughs> fast. But at any rate, um, um, that's the isotope. Plutonium is the artificial isotope that we're familiar with. Some people more familiar with than they should be. But, <laughs> but at any rate, that is not found in nature. You cannot go and dig plutonium up. The only way you can make plutonium is in a nuclear reactor, where you're bombarding uranium isotopes with neutrons produced by the reactor, and it slowly turns uranium, in the right kind of uranium, into plutonium. And then you gather the plutonium up, stick it together in a big ball, put a bunch of explosives around it, and boom. Okay. So that's, that, that's an example of an artificial element that we don't see in nature, but is produced, unfortunately, in fairly sizable quantities by various nations. Uh, others have such a short half-life that they're just there for fleeting instants enough to detect their presence, like those higher elements, 115, 117, those kind. So, but the thing is, that's not too many different kinds of atoms. That's a limited number. So how do we get all kinds of substances that we see with all these kinds of properties? That's how we make, that's because of molecules. And a bulk collection of a molecule is often called a compound. Okay, now molecules are collections of atoms. Two or more. They may be the same atom, they may be different atoms. Two or more atoms that are joined together by what we call chemical bonds. And we'll see those later on. And there's different types of chemical bonds, and we'll see that later on. So chemical bonds are forces, and we'll, I'll just jump ahead, involving exchanges between outer electrons and atoms. And those make chemical bonds. They join atoms together, sometimes quite tightly. Okay, so molecules. Now, although there's only 92 natural elements, there are a virtually infinite variety of different kinds of molecules. Carbon atoms in particular have the ability to join with up to four other atoms 
you know, a tremendous amount of diversity. That's why there are more organic molecules known than every other kind of molecule put together. Because carbon's very good at making chemical bonds with a wide range of different types of other atoms. Okay, now, we have something called a molecular weight. And we'll see this a lot in this class. The molecular weight of something is you add up the atomic weights, not the atomic numbers, but you add up the atomic weights of all the atoms present. So we'll say sum of atomic weights. Now, many of the things that we're quite familiar with are molecules rather than atoms. Now, this gold and this wedding ring here, go, that, that's aside from all the contaminants they put in it, that's mostly, that's single atoms of gold. So that's an element, and then the contaminants. Okay, so it's not forming molecules. On the other hand, a lot of things we're familiar with are molecules. For instance, hydrogen. You never find hydrogen atoms around. They're too reactive, at least under ordinary conditions. So hydrogen joins together with, two bond, with a chemical bond forming hydrogen gas. And it's molecular weight equals 2 because your normal predominant isotope of hydrogen has an atomic weight of 1. It has a single proton and no neutrons in the nucleus. There are a couple other isotopes that do, but most of it's normal, ordinary hydrogen. So it's got a molecular weight of 2. Oxygen gas that we breathe is two oxygen atoms together. And that gives us, because oxygen has an atomic weight of 16, it gives us a molecular weight of 32. <coughs> nitrogen, a major component of our atmosphere. Two nitrogen atoms, 28. Carbon dioxide, our favorite greenhouse gas, 16 each for the two oxygens, 12 for the carbon, so we have 44. Okay, water, two hydrogens and an oxygen, that's 18. Now, these are small molecules, but a lot of biological molecules are quite large. For instance, a common protein, what we call hemoglobin, that's a protein, that's actually four proteins, four separate molecules of two different types, but that's a protein that binds oxygen and then gives it up to cells. So if you lose your hemoglobin, you're in bad shape. Okay, so hemoglobin, it's a protein, it's a large biological molecule. Its molecular weight is 64,000 because it has about a thousand different kinds of, about a thousand atoms in that molecule. And there are some proteins with molecular weights of hundreds of thousands, others with molecular weights 10, 15,000, some with molecular weights of hundreds of thousands. Nucleic acids, DNA molecules, have molecular weights in the hundreds of thousands and millions. Uh, a lot of our other biological molecules, like lipids and things like that, have molecular weights in their hundreds. So a lot of molecules, especially molecules produced by life, are very large, very complex, consisting of many different kinds of atoms, sometimes even thousands of different atoms. Okay, so that's the concept of molecular weights. Now, molecules have all kinds of properties. But many times the property, and we'll see why a little bit, many times the <laughs> properties of molecules are very different from the properties of the atoms that make them up. Now let's take a case in point here. Let's suppose we have sodium. Now sodium, that's an element, that's an atom. Sodium is a silvery soft metal. You can scratch it with your fingernails. It has a low melting point. Stick it in the oven. I'm not going to invite you to do this, by the way. But put it in an oven, turn the oven on, board on the stuff will turn into a liquid. It will melt on you. If you throw sodium in water, it reacts violently with the water, producing very hot hydrogen gas, which bubbles up and explodes in your face. So throwing sodium in water is a very bad idea. You get a nice explosion. I knew somebody who tossed a large lump of sodium in somebody's swimming pool and blew a hole in the bottom. And the local police did not know about that. 
nor do the people who enter, so we put them all now. <laughs> but, you know, it's a violent, it reacts very violently with water. Now, let's look at another atom here, chlorine. Chlorine is a green gas at room temperature. It is toxic. It is corrosive. It's nasty, nasty stuff. Chlorine first came into fame in World War I because the Allies and the, and the Germans used to fire shells containing chlorine gas at each other. And people who ended up breathing this stuff in often died of respiratory failure. It irritated the lungs so much that your lungs would fill up with fluid and you basically drowned in it. It would burn your eyes, blind you, burn your mucous membranes. Matter of fact, Adolf Hitler was on the receiving end of a chlorine gas attack when he was a corporal in World War I. And as bad as Hitler was, and even though both the Axis and the Allies in World War II had lots of stockpiles of chemical weapons, even Hitler thought nothing about being nice. I mean, after all, he murdered six million Jews and invaded Russia and killed millions of people there and stuff like that. He never launched chemical weapons himself. He had a first-hand experience with that, with chlorine. So that's nasty, nasty, nasty stuff. But now, if we were to join sodium and chlorine together to make a molecule, we have sodium chloride, ordinary table salt. Salt does not dissolve when you throw it in water. I mean, it does not explode when you throw more. It dissolves. It's slightly corrosive. If you get concentrated salt water in your eyes, it's good. or on, you know, bare skin, it's going to be irritating. It's going to burn, but it's nothing like chlorine. So the properties are quite a bit different. Sodium chloride are very, very different. And it's not a metal, soft silvery metal. It's not a gas. It's a kind of rock-like crystal. So its physical and its chemical properties are very different from the elements that make it up. And that's common with a lot of molecules. Their properties differ quite a bit from the atoms that make them up. And we're going to see why later. The reason why is because of the types of chemical bonds they form and the reason and the way that chemical bonds form. So that's an important thing about molecules. The properties are often different, and their chemistry is often very different from the atoms that make them up. Okay.